scientist Evelyn from the California Science Center here to help you feel a little less stuck at home. Now today is another very special day for us because uh, I know it looks like I'm outside, but I'm actually inside. I am in our exploration grove inside the big lab. Now most of you probably don't get a chance to come into our big lab, but our exploration grove is one of the places we use to look for tiny little creatures that are living in the plants, on the leaves of the plants, and be able to get a better idea of how they're helping our ecosystem in here be healthy. Now, once again, I have a very special host that's going to join us today and show us some creepy crawlers. Now, today is the day before Earth Day. So to go along with our theme, we're going to learn a little bit about some bugs and how they help our environment. So scientists joining me today, I have Louise. Come on over, Louise. Hi, scientists. <laughs> Um, so my name is Louise. I'm one of the senior keepers here at the California Science Center, which means I take care of all of our li land animals. Um, and I brought over some animals that I thought would be great for celebrating Earth Day because they're so critical to our Earth. Now, Evelyn mentioned bugs. Bugs is a word we use a lot. And it's kind of a misnomer because if you're really being a scientist, bugs are a very small group of animals that have very special mouth parts, and we don't see them all that much in our day-to-day. -day. What we usually are talking about are arthropods. Arthropods is a big word, but what it means is jointed legs. So joint, like this, um, and legs, uh, and they tend to have a lot of them. Um, and so they're really important for our environment in different ways, and we're going to explore that a little bit. Now, in the big family of arthropods, you're going to have everything from your beetles to your lobsters. And they all form different smaller families. So one of the families that we most often talk about is insects. So I'm going to show you an example of an insect. And insects are pretty cool because they are defined as having three body parts and six legs. This is my friend, a Madagascar hissing cockroach. Super cool. You've probably seen them here at the California Science Center. They're really, really great animals. Now, three body parts might be a little bit tough to see, but if you look under there, you've got her head. She's looking up a little bit. Then you have this part right here called the thorax, like the chest, where all the legs are coming out. And then you have this back part right here called the abdomen. And that abdomen is where all the internal organs are. Now, she has these really cool body parts, as well as some really cool things coming off the top of her head called antenna. Not all insects have antenna, not all insects have wings, but those are things that you can find on insects. Really cool animal to have in your backyard. Maybe not this one because she's from Madagascar, but cockroaches and different insects like her are super helpful for our environment. Cockroaches are great because they eat a lot of things that we don't want around, like maybe some fruit that's gone bad, or maybe even some small animals that have died. She'll help eat that and turn it into great soil for all of these wonderful trees, which is really important for our environment. So she's turning stuff into soil. Now, my next group of animals are from the arachnid family. The arachnid family are distinguished by having two body parts and eight legs. My friend is a little bit shy, so I'm going to take a little bit to take her out. And while I do, I'll talk to you a little bit about her and see if you can guess what she is. She has hairs all over her body. And unlike us, she doesn't use that hair to keep warm. She uses it to defend herself. Dun, dun, dun. Super fun. <laughs> This is a Chilean rose tarantula. Rose because some of her hairs are kind of pinkish. Now that hair is for defense because it can make animals super itchy. If they touch it or if she flicks it at them, it will make them really, really itchy. And that's great because that gives her a chance to run away. Now if you look, here it's a little bit easier to see. Two body parts and eight legs. She is an arachnid. She's a spider. Also in this family you have scorpions and mites and a couple other friends. Now, why are sp spiders like this useful? Well, they don't eat s stuff to turn it into soil. They eat other bugs. So they might eat bugs that we don't want around, like our mosquitoes and our ticks, um, and maybe some other bugs that we don't really want to have around. 
and they help keep all of that in balance. So if we don't have spiders, we miss out a lot on um, keeping our environment in balance, and even though they might be creepy. They are a little creepy, and I have a question for you. Yeah. Would we find a rose hair tarantula in our backyards by accident? We probably won't find a rose hair tarantula because they are from Chile, unless it's someone's pet. Um, but you might, if you live a little bit out of the way of the city, you might find our local tarantula species. A little bit smaller than this one, and she's more blonde, but um, still really cool tarantula. That doesn't mean that you should go picking her up like I'm doing, because like I said, their hairs can be pretty itchy. And they're not as used to it. All right, I'm going to put her down, and we're going to look at a couple other of our arthropod friends. Now, all different arthropods have different jobs in our ecosystems, and these ones people often overlook, but I'm betting that you've learned about them at a certain point because everybody finds them pretty cute. This is a sow bug. Now, sow bugs, often called roly-polies, are super important for our environment. They also eat dead stuff like our cockroach um, and turn it into wonderful soil, but they might eat stuff that's a little bit tougher for animals like our cockroaches. So they might eat stuff like wood and turn it into wonderful soil. Now, if you look at those body parts, no longer are we having distinct chunks. It's just a whole bunch of chunks all along and legs corresponding to each of those. They have a lot of legs. This is called an isopod. Ooh, he dropped down. Um, so these guys are also in the arthropod family, still jointed legs, but they are not insects. All right, and then I have one last one to show you. Um, this is one of my personal favorites. These guys just beat all the records for jointed legs and body parts. This is called a millipede, and oh, millipedes cute. are super cute, right? <laughs> Definitely. They have those fun little antenna on top of their heads, um, but they are not insects because they have way too many legs to be insects. Um, and if you look at them closely, you can sometimes see that it kind of looks like a wave as they walk. All the legs moving, that's a great shot right there. Yeah. So millipedes, again, these guys eat a lot of dead stuff and turn it into good soil for our environment. Um, but they will also spend a lot of time underground, kind of catching the things that maybe some of our other animals are not getting on the surface, which is great. So they're harder to find because they're underground, but still very important to our environment. Super cool. Thank you, Louise. Yeah. So I love that we get to learn a little bit more about all of the different animals. And I know that some of these animals you can find here at the Science Center, yes. either in World of Life or our rock room. Where can we find the Chilean? The tarantula? Um, our tarantula only comes out for programs for our keeper talks, but you can find an, the local species of tarantula I mentioned, uh, the blonde tarantula, in the desert zone, which is a great place to check out. Now, I yep. know your time is limited with us, so I have another question for you. Yes. So if we want to be good neighbors to some of these other animals that are helping us out, even though we don't know that they're helping us out, what, what's something that we can try at home or do to help out our insect and bug friends? For sure, yeah. So they're being great neighbors to us, even though we don't see it. We want to be a good neighbor to them. Um, so if you look at maybe your park or your front lawn, you have a lawn that's beautiful to us, but doesn't have a whole lot of diversity of environments and can sometimes not be so great for our bugs. So we want to create little spaces where they can live. And one of the great ways you can do that is by making a bug hotel. Now that might sound really funny, but bug hotels are great places for bugs to live. This is one I made today, um, really easy to put together. I just took some of the um, leaves from our bamboo trees and some toilet paper rolls and some cardboard and some seedy things and even some packing material from a package I received lately. Um, and this is a great place for bugs to come and maybe lay their eggs, maybe find somewhere where they can um, nest in and then go out and catch all those mosquitoes and things that we don't want in our environment. So bug hotels are a fun way to get involved and it's fun because then you can revisit it every so often and check. Are there new bugs living in my bug hotel? Another way we can help our bugs is by um, reducing the amount of ke harmful chemicals that we use in our home. Now, yes, 
there are some animals that we don't want in our environment. Um, and so we might use these chemicals to get rid of them. But there's no distinction between the animals we don't want and the animals we do. And so a lot of those chemicals can end up harming our environment and offsetting that balance that we were talking about. So check your labels, maybe go with your parents and check out what kind of chemicals can we use instead to be a little bit more of a good neighbor to our bug friends. All right, Louise, thank you so much for joining us today. Yeah. Our scientists at home, don't forget to check out our website and download our newest activity yes. sheet that has you exploring your outside spaces, hopefully finding some critters that live nearby. Yes. Thank you so much for joining us, and we hope you feel a little less stuck at home. Bye. Be sure to visit our website Monday through Friday at 10 a.m. for more stuck-at-home science activities.